if we're not getting the reaction and we keep on turning up, then maybe we're saying the wrong things. Maybe we're talking to the wrong audience. You need to start building up those relationships, which are general chit chats, general little conversations where you get to meet somebody. In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. So you have a little saying there, Garvin, to introduce us. <laughs> I have a little. That's an under. I have a little saying. I don't know what a little saying is. I, I tend to say big sayings and big things. And I say, actually, I was walking down here a couple of minutes ago and the wife says, right, you're still talking. I, go, I was trying to explain what was we were talking about earlier on. And she says, you know, she's not interested. Not not interested, but I have to recognize when when something is not what someone, your your audience is not in, there, there is it is. The audience I was talking to at that point in time, not a couple of minutes ago, was my wife in the kitchen and I was just grabbing a quick cup of coffee before coming back here to do our talk, our, 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 our chat, or our conversation, or our discussion. But I was trying to let her know what we were discussing before this, in the preamble. And she says, you're still talking. And she was walking away this time. I go, and I'm still talking at her, to her back, trying to explain what it is we were discussing about writers and this, that, and the other. And, but what I should have realized was that was not my audience. My audience was not interested. They gave me the minute. They gave me the courtesy of listening for a minute or two. But I kept on talking. I kept on going. I was very excited about what I had to say. But there was no one in the room listening they, they've the audience <laughs> had got up and walked out the door and left they shouted at me a courtesy are you still talking because what they were really saying is i'm not listening i'm not listening i didn't hear well, you this, this, i'm uh, not uh, your audience yeah. it's not entertaining you're not informing me <laughs> and they're gone i'm gone and I'm, I'm i'm still there talking so what was interesting about that is is make sure you're talking to the right audience make sure well, actually, it's something a, they're interested in yeah. and not you there's another <laughs> message in there because i think they're also saying show don't tell <laughs> in other words, show, don't talk. You know, show us what you're doing. Don't tell us what you're doing. And I think that becomes an important part of the, of the process of what we're doing as well. Is that? Oh, God, I couldn't even explain what it is I was doing. The show, <laughs> as we said before, is highly complex. It's 50 moving parts. We're not in a position to show. But what we are trying to do is, can we talk succinctly enough to create the vision that they can see what it is we're talking about and understand it and get it and be entertained by it, as opposed to it was so complex to begin with, they were put off and didn't invest their time in it to try and understand it, to try and get to that level of engagement whereby they're interested in it. So it's like this elevator pitch before. You've got 30 seconds or you have a minute and a half to get your point across, do a little dance, do a little song, get them, enter entertain them, get them involved and get them to understand what it is you're trying to impart. Whoever that audience is, whatever the subject matter is, and that that's, I keep, I nearly learn that every day, according to whether it's a child, the wife, myself, a colleague, a business person, you've got a couple of seconds because it's first impressions count. And before you open your mouth, and in my case, I never think, never think before I talk, maybe you're meant to be listening if they're talking, but get, get that pitch, get that ready, get the dance you know, be doing it in your head. Do do a little Michael Flatley in your head. It's all going on in there, and you're about to break out into song and dance and entertain and inform and get that audience of one or whoever you're looking at and whoever you're doing it for to understand what it is you're doing and why you're doing it and get them dancing along. And if they're walking away going, I'm not listening, it's already over. You're a dead man walking. You've got to get them back. You've got to get them. Or next time round, Get it more right. I, I think it, it, there's some interesting things there that were popping up in my head because I, I've had a, a few essays to write recently. And uh, again, you're kind of sitting there kind of going, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? And if you're thinking about a pitch and you see somebody and you just go in there and you go and just try and pitch, you've, there's no – it's it's a hard sell. It's a hard call sell that we, we're already talking about that we, we're, we're finding a bit frustrating on LinkedIn. What what needs to be done is that little bit of research. I remember there's a story of Kenny Everett, 
And um, he used to see that the the general director of the BBC or whatever it was used to go past at a certain time every day. He so he found that every day at the same time, nine o'clock, he walked past, went into the lift and went up the lift. So he decided that instead of just running up and going and saying to him, hi, I'm Kenny Everett, give me a show, which is really what the elevator pitch would have been, he went to the reception and said, would you give a call for Kenny Everett and ask him to come to reception? So at nine o'clock, there's the general director walking through and the tannoy goes, would Mr. Kenny Everett please come to reception? And for the next 10 days or so, would Mr. Kenny Everett please come to reception? And what happened was the general director went up to the reception and said, could you make an appointment for me to see this Kenny Everett, please? I'd like to see him. He must be important because every day I've come in here. His name is actually being shouted across the tannoy. So if you could set up an appointment, I'd really appreciate that. And that's how he got to get his, his now, elevator pit. He'd done his planning and preparation. I heard that story. <laughs> that's it. It's who is your... What's your strategy? What's your strategy? That, that, what was going on there was he knew his target audience. He knew what he was trying to get in the end, which was a meeting. He was not trying to bring it any further to the elevator pitch and try and pitch it in an elevator, out of context, in someone else's timeline without being asked. So what we're all trying... Actually, this is the conversation we were having this morning again about we were discussing uh, screenwriters and their scripts and drawers and the fact that there's no question that there might be a quality story in the drawer and someone's put their learned how to write or maybe they haven't, maybe had a natural ability. They've wrote something. It's their baby. It's their passion project in the absence of someone having commissioned it. So therefore, it wasn't commissioned because it's in the drawer. This is something they wrote the book for themselves. They wrote the screenplay of their story, their dream or, or, or their passion project. But what the problem is, is in our perception is it's in the drawer. It hasn't been made. The bit that you have to get to the now is no one knows this story exists other than them and a few other people and family and friends or maybe a couple of people they sent to the Reddit or half Reddit and then it rejected it. Now, what we were talking about a minute ago was I know my sister wrote a book, an illustrated child's book, you know, 10, 15 years ago and she sent it to one or two publishers which were the wrong publishers and weren't interested in children's books, least of all il illustrated ones from unknown writers or illustrators, and they rejected it nearly out of hand. And it went straight back in the drawer. Nobody will like this. Nobody loves this. I'm not a writer. I'm not an illustrator. Sure, who would want it? No one's seen it. The wrong audience saw it and rejected it, but not rejected it because it was bad or not good. Rejected it because it wasn't for them they didn't ask for it. It's not what they do. It's not what the ex what they're the expert in. It's not what they commission. It's not what they sell. It's the wrong audience. And now you've aligned yourself to this wrong audience rejection and you're not worthy. Your work is not worthy. Or it went back in a drawer or you felt that you couldn't put it to the next publisher. I mean, we know that J.K. Rowling's The World probably sent it to 500 before you got to the right one. But the whole point is, it's not to take it personal, it's to understand, is it for them? It might not even be for them now, and it will be in five years' time because the their audience of their customer market is now asking for this type of thing. So the whole thing here is for to get and get your work or your style of work in front of somebody that could be your potential customer, or in this case, your route to market. You're, if it's a screenwriter or a film drama script writer, they're not trying to produce it themselves. They need this, they're at this level. They, for them, for their work to be seen, it has to then enter the production process. It has to be produced. It has to be invested in. It then has to be distributed and marketed. And then someone will be able to watch an episode of Eeyore that they help write or a, or a sci-fi something that they, they co-wrote or wrote in total and it was produced and, and money was invested. And that, doesn't mean they were a bad or good writer because there's some rubbish that's been produced out there and you get to see it and the money was invested but then never invested again and they're not commissioned a second time or there was great stuff in drawers that 
is gold, but will never be mined because it, we don't know where that mountain is and we don't have the map with the X on it and no one is actually looking for it or understands that it even exists. So you have to get your script, the story of you, whatever that might be, out of the drawer and to your first audience of the person that can help you next to get you to the next level. And that's where we're sort of at at the moment. I think in many ways, when people are starting to write scripts, the, the ones that are doing for themselves should really be seen for them as just their kind of training uh, platform just to get them, you know, doing stuff. I mean, I've heard somewhere that you really need to write 10 feature film scripts to really get to the point where you you know how to write a script. And, and if you're writing for yourself, it should just be seen as... That's what you're doing. You're training yourself to get to the point where you can you can iron out little problems, but you need to be working with other people to see what their needs are. And and I and I'd mentioned to Garvin earlier on that as a as an editor, as a professional editor, I wasn't editing for myself. I was working for a director. I was trying to get inside their head to work out what it is they wanted so that I could craft together a story that was similar to what they wanted. And I think that's what you have to do as writers. You you need to uh, contact, or not contact, you need to investigate and do the research. Remember I said I was doing an essay and part of the essay was you you do your research and from the research, you cobble together some ideas that will create some kind of framework and then you write your essay and you submit that. And I've gone through a sort of process that guarantees me a certain grade. You need to do the same thing with when you're trying to write something. Do your practice, do your morning pages if you're going to do the artist way, just to keep on writing and writing. But also go off, research what people are looking for, what's the general consensus that's being asked for, and then try to see if you can get talking to those sort of people to, you know, build up some kind of relationship. Because that's where that's where when I was working as a runner. I then got to build up a relationship with a couple of production companies and they asked me then to do something that helped solve their problem that they had at that particular point in time. And I was able to get into it in there to do that. And that's what writers need to do. It's, it's kind of, you need to start building up those relationships, which are general chit chats, general little conversations where you get to meet somebody. And then you build up this kind of bouncing ideas backwards and forwards, which is like Garvin and myself have been doing. And then all of a sudden it's kind of, oh, could you dock out this? Could you do this? And you do little projects, little projects, and they build it to something bigger. And that's where the relationships come from. It is all about building relationships. And one of the problems I've been seeing on LinkedIn is that I'm getting people connecting with me. And the first thing they do is they don't know anything about me and they're selling a product that I have no notion, a bit like a bit like Garvin's wife just a few moments ago. They're telling me and talking to me about all their wonderful gadgets and gizmos and all that kind of stuff. And I haven't the foggiest idea because that's not what I want at this point. But if something goes wrong or I need something, then I'll go and looking for that 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 thing that I need. A bit like, you know, the, the Kenny Everett thing that I just mentioned, because something had been planted in that general director's mind, he then was drawn to it. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to put things out there that draw people to you slowly, progressively. You need that person to think as though their only answer is you. And that's the reason why they've come to you, not the other way around. Not that you've been planting things there and growing a relationship, plant thing again. And that's what needs to be developed. And if you don't do that, the first thing that's going to happen is everybody's going to say, just go away, stop talking, stop doing this. I'm not interested. I've got other priorities that are on my mind at this particular point in time. <laughs> That's it. Now, I mean, you're, we're back to an earlier episode and it's the story of you, the product of you, not your product. You know, so I don't, I don't think many people even know what it is. We are trying to sell, going to sell. It doesn't really matter. We're saying this is not the sell. At this point in time, what we want to do is form a, that type of relationship. Actually, that will be an output of just getting in front of people so they're even aware that we exist. And they won't even know that it's, uh, that it's us personally. All that we're doing at the moment is turning up in front of them on devices that they're looking at. And we're starting to turn up. And we know based on number of views or, or number of presentations by, 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 by whatever algorithm that we are turning up in front of people. And we know from reactions on Facebook that 
so many pressed play and listened to a little something that we might be talking about. And what we call them as entertaining little ditties. They're not cells. They're just, hello, we're here. This is us. We like talking about these things. You might too. Now, we're not, now, if you look at who's posting, you might see it's the Film Production Academy or Garvin or George. And if someone wants to look a bit further and go, who are these characters? They can go, here's your profile. Here's your CV. Here's who you're the COO or CEO of. Here's what your company does. We're just saying at the moment, we're turning up where they are and we're ho- and we're not even saying that they are they are our potential customers we're turning up where everybody is and with a bit of targeting we're saying we know our potential customer or relationship type people that we want to have relationships with for whatever reason are turning up there as well. And we're hoping to hit them. We have a better chance of hitting them than not if we don't turn up. Now, when we understand marketing better and the algorithms better and tags better, we will target the the groups that they're more likely in. So if you were saying screenwriters are in screenwriter groups and producers are in producer groups, well, technically speaking, the screenwriters should be in the producer groups and the producers in the screenwriters because you're in the wrong group if you're selling to yourself or you're like, because you all have something to sell. That's the competition. You want to be where they're not. You want to be where the customer is. You want to be where the supplier, like you're the supplier. So that's where you don't hang out with the suppliers. You hang out with the customers hoping to supply them. And we are turning up. So we won't get caught up about screenwriters or producers. They just happen to be the products that are the suppliers or the customers that we might deal with. For anyone else out there in the big bad world, it's the product of you. It's you've got to turn up, get out of bed, copy something, edit something, video something, start talking. Don't go direct to sale, as George says. It's, are you there? Do I, are you presented? We're turning up and we're putting our new shirt on and we're polishing our shoes and I'm even shining my bald head. We're saying we're here and we're here on a regular basis. And you know we've got something to say, but you have to press play. We want to attract you enough to press play. And we don't want to frighten you away with a hard sell when you do. We want to reel you in. We want to get to the Kenny Everett opportunity of actually having you come to us, ask us what we do, know that you need it, and now we're in the consideration set. So anybody out there that wants to get their work seen or whatever is they, their skill set and the opportunity to use it through their CV or be asked or commissioned needs to sell themselves first. Then sell an example of what it is they do to someone who asked for it or is interested in hearing about it or potentially, but not in the opposite order. And I think that's the problem because quite often, as, as I mentioned earlier on, people are so quick to tell us what they're doing and they haven't worked out that relationship. And I think that's where things have gone wrong. What we're starting to see is that we're getting the same people viewing us and they're coming back and looking at us. And then we're starting to see what they're looking at elsewhere. And we begin to get a flavor of what their needs and their interests are because they'll then sort of send us stuff that they're they're interested in and and we can see in a way what their thought processes are and that's really what we're we're trying to discover is what's their thought process what are they thinking at the moment and have we got something that might in, in, interest them just a little bit to gradually keep that relationship going to interact with us in some form or fashion which we're actually seeing and the other thing is and I suddenly realized that here we are now 18 19 minutes into the show and the very first thing you were going to do Garvin was to read us your daily thing was read actually I just looked down here yeah. and said I didn't read it no so I mean okay there you go what I wanted to read well, and I, again if anyone has been listening to all these episodes they were intermittently at different points in time we may 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 have or may not have when we're running out a little bit of breath looked at this little little uh, calendar and it's a, it's a motivational calendar and today's one October 26 just to throw it in there it won't mean anything to anybody and it's in the future some way it's success seems to be largely a matter of hanging on after the others have let go don't give up that's what I'm hearing immediately and that was one it's of our success, other shows wasn't it is don't give up uh, exactly yeah. no no well, well it's don't give up no I'm no, it doesn't say don't give up I'm I'm adding that a little bit on it's going success is about hanging on 
like after others have let go. It's a lot of us, actually, it's all, even those writers again, there's, there's hundreds of them out there and there could be five get picked and the other 95 are, there's all that curve of those that want to be next and there's others hanging on for dear life and others that have given up along the way and they have, they've written something that's in a drawer and it won't ever get to the next level because that passion is being the light has been put out of the fire and they didn't get the assistance or help or didn't work first time. So success in this case is we have to keep on going. We have to react to what we're hearing. We have to basically pivot. We have to change. We have to listen to our target audience and realize that if we're not getting the reaction and we keep on turning up, then maybe we're saying the wrong things. Maybe we're talking to the wrong audience. If we, you know, an awful lot, there's no point in trying to sort of flog a dead horse if no one wants the product you're selling, then listen to the audience again and go, if it's the right audience and they don't want it, is it the wrong quality, the wrong price? What about, is it that it's just a passion project? There's many a Dragon's Den and Shark Tank where the people went on, they invested a house in it and it was a passion project. There was no audience wanting it or willing to pay for it. That wanting and willing to pay and the matching to production is the most important thing in business in the absence of, if you want to spend your own money, that's fine. If you're able to lose it and afford it, that's fine. But if you want to afford to lose someone else's money, you better have something that's going to make them money. They know the risk reward return. You've sold to them first in the sense that they bought into your story, your dream, your passion, and they see the big picture. They see the ultimate success, the hope value we spoke about before, because it's, it's the producer's money. It's the investor's money. They, and it's the dragon's money. They keep, the, every time I watch these shark tanks and I, and the dragon's dens and they keep on going, I want 100 grand for 1% and they go 10 million for what? You go, what's the valuation? What's the base on? What, what customers have you got? No, it's my dream. You go, no, sorry. I'll give you 10 grand for 90%. And when I build a value, you get some, but it's to under, people have to understand who's bringing the value when, you know, who's, where is the value currently in the journey? Where is the risk? Where is the reward? And you have to share it accordingly. It's the venture capitalists will take the biggest slice of pie at the beginning. They will get out with a 10x and a thousand percent return. And the next bunch will pay a higher price for a little bit of something because the risk has been taken away. The value has been shown. They understand what a 10% return looks like and they're willing to buy it at that point in time. That's great. I want to see the film. I don't want to invest the 10 million in making it. I want to spend the 10 quid to see it. So it's really where in who's your, who's your first customer and we're going success for us is to keep on turning up at this point in time to understand we have to align to different audiences that we have to go on a long journey. It could be a year, two years, three years where success starts in terms of monetary definition <clears throat> of return could be three years from now, but to successfully keep on turning up is not to lose that passion to see the vision, to want to keep on materializing it and to get the language that we can impart that vision to someone else. And that's the stuff, that, that's what our next level of success is, is to actually invest in is can we get someone else understand and get excited about our vision? Now, one of the things that's quite important is that although Garvin was actually talking about investment and all that, uh, which is is a key part of this. <clears throat> One of the other key things is uh, to keep on going is that if you've started a project and economically within your means you can achieve it and finish it, then I would actually recommend you do. Now, I'm not saying a massive great project that takes you all your life, but what I'm saying is that there are writers in the past who have written lots of short stories. They've actually completed them, made sure they were finished, made sure the project was there, because although it may seem as though it's something you did in the past, it's a piece of revenue that you could use in the future. And the way I'm looking at it is if you've written stories and you've made sure they're completed, they may not have been published, you may suddenly hit on something later on where your script or your story or your film suddenly happens to make somebody a load of money. And the audience are then interested to find out, well, what else has he done? What's there? What's available? What's she done? You know, can we find more of her stuff? Then you've got a reservoir of stuff that's finished. And all of a sudden, you may find that all these other things are then 
being pulled out of the drawers and being resorted and suddenly can become a commodity. Now, I had heard of a story of a, of a, a musician who was doing lots of music and everybody kind of went and said, ah, it's not commercial. And he produced thousands and thousands of these songs and these tunes and these little ditties and everything. And after about 20 years, suddenly all his material became commercialized because somebody liked it and they were looking for more and more and more and more. And of course, because he'd finished them, he had more and more to give. It was there. It was in his chess box. And he was able to get the material out there. And that eventually made him all the money that he needed to make. Um, and I think that's the key thing. That's where it's going to take a long time. It's not a thing that happens overnight and you're suddenly going to be successful. You've got to keep working at it. You've got to keep adapting your own approach to things. You've got to keep on learning and seeing where you can improve and what you might need to go back and rework a project at a later date. If you're, If you can within your own means, do these things either in your own time uh, while you're actually working on something else to generate the income. That's all good. But keep on developing those little things because they can eventually lead you somewhere. What we've also been talking about is how to make look at things from a kind of commercial basis where you know that you're, you've done your research, the people that you're talking to that might want to invest in you, you're giving them something that's appealing that they'll say yes that's what I'm interested in because you know what they want. And that's a key point to, to bear in mind as well. Well, back to the weird thing is we're going from production to sales and back and forward there. So there's no no question. Don't We have plenty of shows out there. Don't do nothing in an outing time. You go, it's to be to working on your art. The, the problem is, is the, you know, always finish it. So it's no point in having a half-finished painting, a half-written song, a half-written screenplay. Fine, that's your production. Keep on doing that. Don't I don't disagree with George. Like again, like my sisters, like uh, families and friends, you can keep on writing them, keep on producing them, but not if they keep on going in drawers. And at no point are you engaging with the other part of the process because all you're doing is actually consuming that time. And if it's your passion. Grand. If you want to write for the audience of one, be yourself. Great. It might be you know if you want to paint. Do that. Write the songs. You know, do do the and people are doing this left, right, and center, and you will have that catalog. But that's great if it gets to get the like the day, and it might be your ninety two when that happens, and just in time to die and pass it on to the next generation. If you want to make a living from it, if you want to get a scene in the now time or the near time, you've got to partner with the rest of the the silos that you are not. If you are production, who's IT, who's marketing, who's finance, who's sales. It's who's social media. Someone needs to be doing these other functions in the now and doing them right in the in the right to the same their art in those headings that then packages this product of you, which is your output of time, and get it out there. So you can be Bansky has a production team. You know, I mean, they market and produce in social media up to yin yang. They even catalog down to the level of this is a Bansky. This is where it is. This is legit, and this is going to be acknowledged. And it's ten million quid. You know, if there's no, it's that these an artist one in step one, but a marketeer at the in, in parallel. So we don't want to be. We why are we doing what we're doing? We're not doing it for no money, no time, no. It might be an art. We might like listening to ourselves. We might be going, we've produced a catalog. There's there, it's there for the future, for the world and its mother and any alien that wants to watch it. It's, but at the same time, we'd like to be doing it in the now to an audience engaged in the now or at any time in the future. But the preference is for a now and, and actually preferences for the past and more of a now. So don't be doing stuff. If you want it for someone else, you need to be doing everything else. If it's just for you, fine, do it to your heart's content. But I, and it might find it by accident. But if you want someone to take your product out of a drawer and bring it to the world and you can't afford to, then engage with these type of individuals now. Find the other members of your team, find the dream team and make it real. And the other thing is that You've got to make sure that you understand who your target audience is, whether it is the producer, whether it's the investor, whether it's actually your audience. You need to research enough for why that target audience would want the product you're producing. And even if you're doing it for a future thing, um, you, you're writing or you're producing and we're doing these shows, we actually have a particular person in mind that we're thinking of. 
We're actually picturing that person as we now talk because we want, we see that what we have has some value to them and they just haven't seen it yet or they haven't heard it yet. But we're looking for that audience that needs to understand a little bit about how to get their product out to their audience and to start to see how they can generate some kind of finance from it by understanding who that audience is. Because the more they understand their audience, the more they can then be writing specific material that their audience will keep coming back for time and again, time and again. And as we've mentioned before, that's your engine. That's the little motor that's keeping you going because you're now listening to what the people want and then you're generating it and then feeding it out. And if they change their mind slightly, you're, you're sufficiently on the pulse to understand that that's what they're looking for. They want a slightly different thing. You can then tailor for their needs. A bit like the jackets, tailoring for their needs. And I think that's the key thing. Understand your target audience. Then you can start to produce stuff for that target audience. Get the feedback from them to whether that's what they want. If it is, keep on doing it. If it's not, adapt to what their needs are at that particular point in time. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I'm, I'm reminded of a Tom Cruise film. I can't remember the name of it. You'll probably remember it. But it's show me the money. Show me the money. And the thing is, it's it's you've got to show everyone else the money. It's where are they going to make money from your what you're supplying. It's unless they're just buying it and consuming it. At the end of the day, that's the end consumer. You know, if I want to buy your art and put it on my wall, then I'm go I'm willing to pay X price for that painting and put it on the wall. But I'm now, am I buying it just to consume it as a piece of furniture? Or am I going? It costs a thousand euro. I hope that you're going to become famous, and when you die, I'm going to make ten. I'm investing in art. So there's investors in art, and there's consumers of art that just go. It's furniture. It's IKEA by stealth. I might as well have an original than have a print. So. But but be aware there's a price for each one. And again, you are producing a unique volume. Unless you start doing the print version, then it's a hundred quid of print. And I'm going, I might buy one. Now it just looks well on the wall. I'm doing, there's no investment value unless it's a limited edition. So it comes back to whether it's mass produced, limited edition, or one of a kind. It has a mass audience or a high value, low volume output. It's who's making money from this or is it going to be consumed? Who's willing to pay for this output and, and and where where are they and what's that price and how much can I make and how much do I get actually sometimes it's a much do I give away so I can make it that's where the artist agent comes in so and that's where my, my, my nephew has now got like an agent and he's got his record deals but again somebody's getting their 20 and 30 percent for giving him access to a bigger market there's people making money along every line of the machine and unless that's happening that machine is not you're not in the machine. No one's pushing you because they're pushing whoever makes them the most based on their limited resources and attention span. It's, you've got to be making your agent money. If you're not, you're in a drawer. You, you know, if you, if, if it's not you doing it for yourself. So that, that's where we're doing it for ourselves in the moment. We'd love to make it. Our goal is to be making someone else money. So they actually feed the machine they put more petrol in or more oil in and they, and they actually make more they start mass producing the machine they want to have one here one there one in, one in England one in Ireland it's will this machine make more and more money if I make more of them so so that's the game it's like one book or a million books or a million downloads it's you know one journey one experience what's the price who makes money how long does it take what's the cost to produce so it's Go out there and figure out your story should be how do you make your audience member money, your first audience money, if they're not consuming it just as a piece of entertainment. And the film was Jerry Maguire, in which Tom Cruise was sort of shouting down the phone, show me the money to his client. And, it, and that was what his client was asking for. And that's what he was actually trying to do. So I think that's where we we are. We're we're trying to do the show me the money because we need to see the money as well before we know whether to invest our time into the project that we're currently working on. And we're at the 34 minute mark or thereabouts. So we have to try and do some kind of conclusion. So we've been talking about 
really understanding your target audience so that you can build up a relationship with them so that you can understand what they want, what their needs are, and why they will engage with you. And if you're a writer, that's because they want to watch the stories that you're telling. And that's why you need to understand your target audience. So it's uh, goodbye from me in this episode. And it's goodbye from... Uh, one last is don't show me the bill, show me the money. Take care. Bye for now. See you soon. <laughs> Do what it says on the tin. Follow and share.